Hello guys, and welcome back to another cold episode. On today's episode, as you can tell by the title and the thumbnail, we are talking once again about, about Vernisilf, but more specifically, Adam Emancipator Vernisilf, aka Block Dragon, aka why is this card not banned? So let's quickly do the card by card and the explanation. So the Vernisilfs have a wonderful uh, support system for any sort of earth monsters. While they do lock you into earth monsters, which cost me several games, um, me forgetting that I that I was locked, um, the Vernisilfs ga gain or allow you to gain massive advantage through the ability to discard themselves and then special summon a monster from the graveyard. Just getting you an additional free special summon is very good in this deck without relying on the Ad Emancipators. However, the Ad Emancipators are still very useful. Researcher, Seeker, and Analyzer are all very strong, so having them is still nice. But on top of that, we can also play the, uh, the Shufflers to add additional Earths as well as Fairies as well as shufflers you know they're, they're just very good all of these things pair together very well in order to allow you to end on some pretty decent boards with things like abyss dweller cheng ying etc on top of having some shufflers in the grave to add additional disruption this is very good in a format full of tier however i will say that this is probably not the best way to play it it's probably something with 60 cards giving you the ability to send even more shufflers being able to utilize the vernus silks even more effectively and more specifically being able to add additional resources to block dragon and also, because of the fun the way that this deck in particular functions, you honestly don't need any two specific cards, as long as you have something like a Vernisilf and another of your level fours that you can normal summon, you can then get into Gallant, which can then continue from there with things like Block Dragon or what have you. So, there's that. Uh, but I didn't really want to do that, um, and, you know, you could also play, like, the Hand Rip stuff in 60 and what have you, and I just didn't want to do that, so we're playing 40 instead. So let's do the quick card by card. Uh, we're playing very few Hand Traps. We're playing Triple Maxi, Double Ash Blossom, and a Ghost Spell. Ghost Spell is an Earth. That's why it's in here. Um, it's not the greatest, but it does stop some tier stuff, and it comes up occasionally where it's like being in Earth is very nice because you can banish it for Block Dragon, but that's kind of it. So again, we're only running the one. It's not the greatest against the um, the tier stuff. So there's that. Uh, and then of course we're playing the two called by as well. Very good, just against like Ash Blossom or more specifically Max C. Uh, you could also play Cross Out. I found that most of the time that card was just dead for me and didn't really do anything. So I cut it um, because, yeah, very rare. Like, we're not playing things like Forbidden Droplet or um, or Imperm or any of that stuff. So being able to, like, Cross Out in Imperm is very nice. And since we're not playing that, not really worth it. As you can see, mostly monsters here. You could also play like Sekka's Light instead of the two called buys. That could also be helpful. Uh, the problem is, again, you lose very hard to Maxi. So there's that. Uh, next up, we have uh, only one Seeker, three Researchers, and two Analyzers. The reason for the only one Seeker is because it's just not as good or as useful of a tuner to get. So there you go. Um, you kind of need another uh, Ad Emancipator. So there's that. However, you can also just search it. So that's normally how we're seeing it. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Honestly, you could also cut the researcher down to two as well, because again, most of the time you're going to be searching it off of Block Dragon, and you basically want uh, a, a myriad of ways to get to Gallant. And uh, researcher is kind of a brick. Um, also, on top of this, having the twos are less useful because going into the six can be turned off sometimes because this is a wind, not an earth. So if you go into a Vernisilf and you go into the six, uh, then it's turned off because of the Vernisilfs locking you into earths. So there's that. As for the Vernisilfs, we're playing three of the Quacky Ducky, um, the two of the Flourishing Hills, and the three of the Sleepy Bear. So, yeah. Uh, just the best ones. This one sends a monster. This one searches a Vernisilf card, which isn't as useful, but it's still nice. And then this one searches a Earth Fairy, which happens to also be the Keldo and Mudora, which is also very good. We're playing one Gigantis also to search. We're playing the Triple Kawaki Mairu Guardian, the Triple Kawaki Mairu Supplier as well. Pretty standard there. And then we're playing one Revival Golem to send off of a... Um, Awakening Forest, a Sleepy Bear, and then the two Tackle Crusader as well as two Zeno Guitar. These just happen to be uh, the ratios that I found to be most useful. Being able to have uh, Tackle Crusader is very nice. Being able to flip a card face down or bounce a Spell Trap is very nice. Uh, and then we have Zeno Guitar to, uh, you know, send a card, uh, recur a card if it's sent to the graveyard, banish, etc., uh, etc. Et so just nice additional uh, recursion. 
little... There's kind of, like, too many normal summons here, but um, we still have a bunch of ways to, to get more cards onto the field. And then, of course, we're maxing out on the Shufflers, and that's it. Uh, moving on to the extra deck... Oh, and, and of course, the one block dragon. Moving on to the extra deck, we can play both Beast as well as Barkeon, um, which is very nice. Uh, normally, you will make Beast with the Vernisilf Misty Seedling, special summoning it out in order to go into uh, Beast with a level 2 tuner. Um, however, in theory, you could also make it with Maxi and Ghost Bell, which is very funny and never came up. Uh, but that is technically something you could do. Also, if you get your levels modulated... Uh, by something like, I don't know, a Predator Plant card, uh, which did happen. You could also do that um, and, and make the, the beast that way. We have the Barkeon, we have the Raptite, uh, which is fine. Um, honestly, you got to remember that this is a wind and you are locked into wind effects, or, or sorry, earth effects with the Vernisilfs. I did this so many times where I just summoned this and then it didn't do anything. I was like, oh shoot, I've now screwed myself. Um, and it, yeah. Uh, same with Boralode Savage. You can't make Boreload if you've already activated a Vernisilf because it's not going to do anything. Has no effect because it has to activate its effect to equip. Um, but it's still good. It's very nice to be able to go into this off of like normal Adam Emancipator combos. So there's that. We have the one Baron, the one Changing. Both of these don't really need to activate on the turn that they are summoned. So that's fine. We have the Abyss Dweller as well. Again, doesn't need to be activated the turn it's summoned. Uh, we have Baguska, Gallant Granite, and Zeus. Zeus came up a bunch where if you're able to go like Abyss Dweller, lock out the, the opponent with the Abyss Dweller, and then go into the Zeus, you're able to then clear the field, which is very nice. Um, you can summon this off of like uh, the Mudora Keldo normal summon, something like that, which is very cool. Next up, we have uh, the Link Monsters, IP Masquerina, Ausa. Ausa is very good as well, just being able to add one of the um, uh, shufflers from your opponent or a Kelbeck or what have you. Uh, so that's not, that's nice as well. We have the Unicorn, the Apollosa, and the Access Code. So that's the deck. Let's hop into the replays and show you how this deck performs. All right, so here we are going first with a decent hand. It's not crazy, but it's pretty decent. Uh, so we're going to start off with the Vernisilf in order to grab up the Misty Seedling, and then we are going to special summon out our Vernisilf. We're going to activate the Misty Seedling then in order to grab up the Keldo and special summon it back the Tackle Crusader. Uh, we're then going to go for Gallant Granite, activate the effect in order to grab up ourselves the Blocky boy. We can then normal summon the Keldo here and go into IP Mask Arena to get additional materials onto the ear into the graveyard for Block Dragon. We're then going to special summon out the Kawakamaru Supplier and then go for Block Dragon. We're going to link all of those away for the Apollosa and activate one more Block Dragon to grab out one, two, and three, the Researcher, Seeker, and Gigantes. This is normally what we're searching. Uh, we're going to go Gigantes here in order to grab up our, uh, our the ability to special summon the Researcher, and then we're going to activate the Researcher effect in order to reveal a Kawakamaru my guardian which is then going to come out we can then activate the seeker activate its effect and whiff because of course we do that's just what happens with seeker we're then going to go raptite realize we can't activate its effect go for block dragon and then just make a bore load savage because of i'm dumb and forget again that that doesn't activate whoops it's fine. Uh, we're going to set the called by and pass. We're going to reveal the Kawakamaru Guardian. So we do have a lot of monster negates and a called by. So there's that. Let's hope that they are on something that requires monster negates. Um, well, they're on Predator Plants. So there's that. They're going to activate their Clam Sundu. We are going to promptly negate that, prevent them from doing anything. And then out comes Branded Fusion. And hey, would you look at that? If I had a, a, a monster negate, that would have been... Or a spell trap negate. That would have been real nice there. Anyway, my opponent is going to activate the effect of the Lubellion pitching, uh, and then they're going to activate the Bipliss, and I'm going to negate that. Um, I didn't want to use the called by there, even though I know that they have a Bipliss in hand. I'm just like, nah, it's not really worth it. They're going to go to battle and walk over with the Mirror Jade and pass the turn. Now, notably, I could have actually activated my one of my Shufflers in order to shuffle back the Albaz to prevent them from going into anything, but I was like, why would they go Mirror Jade when they could go for the uh, the, the Predator Plant fusion, which would have been so much better because then they could have like gone for additional fusions and it would have been real nice. But alas, uh, they went Mirror Jade. So Anyway, uh, they're going to try and go for the Mirror Jade here. I'm going to negate that. Then they are going to activate the Mirror Jade effect. I'm going to activate the Called By to Called By the Mirror Jade and then activate my Shuffler as well in main phase two in order to shuffle away their Albion that they just shuffled uh, or that they just had. And then I'm going to shuffle away everything because I think that this is probably a branded in red and so yeah i just shuffle away everything just in case we grab analyzer great fantastic we're gonna normal summon that out comes okay well it's not the greatest um they're going to send for costs allowing me to shuffle back the bipliss before it can activate um so yeah they're going to activate this in order to send and then place predator counters which 
I'm going to show you actually helps. So we're going to activate our effect here and reveal a whole bunch of monsters. And we did reveal a, uh, I believe it was, yep, yeah, supplier. So we're going to activate the supplier and grab up ourselves at the guardian. We're then going to synchro into a Raptite, which I happen to shuffle back. And guess what? We are not locked this time. So now we get to search out two monsters, activate the Raptite and reveal. Oh, um, well, that's awkward. Uh, I guess we'll just go Block Dragon attack and hopefully do something in main phase two. Uh, we're going to then link off, keeping the Block Dragon on the field because we can go into the supplier here. And we've already activated the Block Dragon, but this would allow us to use, utilize the Block Dragon on the following turn to gain additional cards. Um, not that we necessarily need additional cards, but alas. We're going to go for the IP Mascarena here because I know that this is basically polymerization and I don't want them to have a polymerization. So we're going to go for the Unicorn, pitch a card, and then activate the Block Dragon in sequence. I'm activating the Block Dragon here because I'd rather this card go through than my Block Dragon. Um, so anyway, out comes the Tackle Crusade. Well, I, I add two Tackle Crusaders. And at this point, the game should be over. We can just make access code and lethal, but I'm not entirely sure what that set card is. So I'm gonna try and play around it. We're gonna go for the access code here, activate the effect of the access code, and then we're gonna normal summon the analyzer. Uh, this could be Biplus, and I don't know if there's, I, I'm pretty sure I know that there is a Predator Plant card that allows them to stop a battle phase. So if I go like uh, access code and pop this without a negate, there is a chance that they have the out or at the very least have a way to survive, and then they could potentially draw into Branded Fusion, which becomes problematic. So I go for the Analyzer, doesn't really matter, doesn't activate, doesn't do anything, and so uh, I just go for the access code and hopefully we can do something from there. They concede there and uh, yeah, that's the game. All right, and here we are going second and uh, well, that's a pretty decent hand. Ash Blossom, Maxi, Keldo, etc. And uh, we are up against a tier. I'm gonna say, no, keep that Sheeran in hand, please and thank you. Uh, I'd rather just not let them have access to Sheeran. Sheeran is a very good effect. So yeah, I feel like Ashing that is probably fine. And uh, yeah, it ends up turning off their entire turn. Fantastic. Uh, you love to see it. Normally, uh, what I've noticed is that a lot of the tier players, what they will do is they will start with Sheeran if their hand is bad. If their hand is not bad, they will wait on Sheeran to potentially see if they have something else that they can do and then go for Sheeran as additional follow-up if they need to. Um, because Sheeran does kind of play into Maxi a bit more, so people are more hesitant to do that. So that's why I ashed there, and uh, yeah. We draw into Modora, which is fantastic, because now we can pitch the Modora. Out comes Maxi, I'm gonna activate my called by, and they don't shuffle the Maxi away. So hey, we get to play the game. That was a horrible mistake from my opponent. I think that they are, are also thinking that we are playing the um, the Tira Shizu, but we are not. Anyway, we're gonna special summon back a Mudora here and go into the Gallant Granite. Now I'm almost certain that this is an Imperm and look at that, it is. Uh, I was like, it's either Imperm or Soliac. I'm gonna just go for the Gallant Granite here. Um, and yeah, there we go. They're gonna activate the Shuffle Away. Have, however, we have enough targets because we can just you know, utilize one of our shufflers. Yeah, the Vernisylphs don't have to special summon a Vernisylph here. Um, so yeah, we're just going to grab up another Vernisylph, which is going to be the Awakening Forest. And we haven't normaled, so we can normal summon and then go into a... Uh, oh, sorry. We're going to increase the attack of our Vernisylph, attack for a whole bunch of damage, and then go into main phase two, into an Abyss Dweller. Um, this should be able to turn off my opponent's Sheeran, which we know is in hand. So yeah, we're going to activate the Abyss Dweller and uh, go from there. They're going to go for the Sheeran here, activate the effect of Pitching Snow, ooh, fantastic, and Normal Summoning Keldo, because of course they did. They're gonna go for Time Thief Redoer, and I'm like, well, okay, yeah, there's not really a whole lot that I can do about that, and out comes the Zayas. Well, I guess we're top decking today. Um, yeah, down goes my Gallant Granite. I'm gonna shuffle back specifically the Snow as well as my two extra deck monsters here, because I don't wanna deal with Snow. Uh, that just makes things way more difficult, even if they don't have enough targets. Uh, I think they had exactly enough. They could have banished their entire hand and field, or grave and field, in order to su summon the Snow, which would have killed me, given the top deck is Seeker. So, all right, I have had terrible luck with Seeker. Seeker threw out uh, my time playing at Emancipator normally whiffs. Just, it normally whiffs, so I needed to not whiff once, and... Oh my gosh, it's Guardian. Fantastic. That is probably the best thing that we could have seen. Oh wait, no, hold on. We have a supplier. Yeah, 100% we're grabbing a supplier. And my opponent concedes, realizing that the game is over. Whew, somehow I won that one. Alright, and here we are once again going second, and, uh... Not the greatest of going second hands, no real interaction, but we do have the ability to play through quite a bit. And out comes Tear, of course, uh, pretty expected here. Uh, they're going to go and activate the Sheeran and mill a Sheeran, and then they are going to not activate the Sheeran, which is kind of odd. 
Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. They do activate the Sheeran. Uh, so they're going to go Sheeran, Soliac, Scream here, and they're going to mill a few more cards as well as searching additional cards. And uh, yeah. So they're going to go for Kit here. Kit effect is going to... Or sorry, they're going to search out the Rhino Heart because they have a normal. And then... <clears throat> hold on. Was that a Visa Starfrost? Huh? What? Uh... What? Okay, no, that's fine. Uh, they're going to grab up their Murley as well. Then they are going to activate Foolish Burial to dump a Gito. And then they are going to mill 10. Now, notably, they milled... Some of the first mills were Exchange and Gravekeeper's Trap, which is very funny. Uh, but with the Agito, they can choose either to have themselves mill an additional 5 or me to deal mill an additional 5. And for some reason, they saw Block Dragon and thought, you know what? I'm going to make my opponent mill more cards instead of myself. So we only hit a Revival Golem, uh, but we also hit Zeno Guitar twice, which is kind of funny. So we're going to activate the Revival Golem because it's a mandatory effect. And then they are going to activate their Agito in order to mill, or sorry, their Kelbex to mill more cards. And then we're going to activate the Squamata. Then we're going to, or sorry, they're going to activate the Squamata. We're going to activate the Zeno Guitar, targeting our Seeker to potentially add it to hand. And uh, that goes through because they don't have a Shuffler. I'm going to I'm going to stack it to the top of my deck a Keldo to guarantee on the mill of their Kelbeck to have a Shuffler in Grave. However, uh, turns out we would have had another one should have stacked the Medora. Uh, hindsight's 2020, right? Anyway, um, they mill a whole bunch more cards. They set the Gravekeeper's Trap, which is a horrible, no good, very bad horribly designed card. Um, anyway, they're going to activate their Rhino Heart. I allow that. They're going to activate Beast as well. Um, so, yeah, Rhino Heart's going to activate. Uh, they're going to mill. They're going to also Fusion Summon into the Root Colors. I'm sure you're wondering, why are we not activating our Shuffler? We have it. Uh, stop them. Because no matter what, they're going to get another way to Fusion Summon, and I want to be able to kind of wait for them to mill additional cards before I shuffle, because I wanted to shuffle away the Exchange of the Spirit. Uh, so we did that. We shuffled away the Havenus, the Researcher, and the Exchange of the Spirit. So I'm feeling pretty good. But of course, last card in their hand was the Perlino. They added the Havenus. This makes things a lot more tricky. Anyway, first things first, we're going to start off with the Block Dragon. They're going to activate the Scream here, and we're going to activate the Zeno Guitar, and then they will activate Max C, because of course they have it. Um, but that's fine, because now we can activate the Tackle Crusader and flip our opponent's Rukalos down, which happened to be milled off of, I believe it was the Kalbeck or Agito or something like that. I don't, I don't, I don't remember what happened. Oh, they milled um, this? They milled something, somehow. Oh, screen? No. No, they did. I pitched it. I don't know. Tackle Crusader somehow hit the grave. Anyway, uh, who cares? We're going to activate our Keldo here. And I'm going to shuffle back some of their cards because I do not remember how Gravekeeper's Trap works. Um, I'm just silly. But uh, anyway, we're going to shuffle back a whole bunch of cards. Uh, they're going to shuffle back some more cards. They're going to grab up the Kelbeck. And I'm like, okay, I have to play through Havnus Kelbeck. That's fine. They're going to pop a card, which uh, happens to be my uh, Block Dragon because they don't know how their own cards work. But that's fine. We're going to normal summon the Analyzer, activate it. Uh, they're going to chain the Havnus. That's totally fine. They're going to mill a few more cards, but we do have another... Oh, we don't have another Shuffler. Um, so there's that. However, uh, I did hit the Myru Guardian, which means that the one Sheeran that they ended up sending to the graveyard can immediately be negated. So we can just negate that and then go for a Seeker here. Activate the effect of the Seeker and... Oh, it didn't whiff. Oh my gosh. Okay, um, and we hit another Kawaki Myra Guardian, which is crazy. Now, while we are under Max C, that doesn't really matter because they were so low on cards that we could just draw them out or just OTK them. There are a myriad of options at that point. They don't really have anything. They already had activated the Havnus. Uh, we'd have to worry about what Kelbeck, which uh, who cares? We're not really going to be milling anything. So at that point, the game is over and my opponent realizes that and concedes. All right, we're back with the deck, and in all honesty, Block Dragon deserves its ban, but it probably won't be banned, seeing as how it's being overshadowed by the absolute powerhouse that is tier, things like Sprite, etc. Uh, I still do think that this deck is incredibly powerful, and due to the Shufflers adding additional ways to get to Earths, as well as additional ways to get bodies onto the field, as well as additional ways to get more bodies into the graveyard, as well as being Shufflers themselves, yeah, these cards add a ton to this archetype. Um, the Ishizu cards as well, the Vernus Sylphs as well. This card, this deck is just going to get better and better. It's basically just Earth Pile at this point. It's no longer even really Ad Emancipators. But uh, yeah, the deck can do some incredible things, ending on some really strong boards and uh, playing through quite a bit as well with in engine stuff, right? Um, being able to play through in uh, within archetypal monsters and not having to add in additional tech cards allows for a lot more uh just, 
just stuff in general allows for you to kind of break boards more efficiently without needing to like rely on evenly matched or what have you that kind of puts you at a disadvantage right um so yeah all in all very solid out emancipator is still great it's i mean it's been topping tournaments as well uh, alongside the tier stuff so there's that that's pretty impressive um and yeah there you go Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you guys did enjoy it. If you did, a like is very much appreciated. And if you want to check out more content like this, as well as more Yu-Gi-Oh!, then just be sure to subscribe. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. And remember to always stay frosty. Bye-bye. Shout out to the Frost Guard, my members. Thank you guys so much for the support. And I hope you enjoy the content.